Hey y'all, if you don't mind, click subscribe, and if you like the video, and click the like button, and we appreciate every one of y'all. Hey y'all, Fat Man Outdoors. Been a couple days since I've been out in the shop making some videos, and uh, we'd had a camp meeting at church all last week, well up through the middle of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I uh, had a lot of good services, and I just was busy with that, and going to church, and and I wore from the Lord, and I decided I was going to stay out of the shop for the week pretty much. I actually posted a few videos of some really, really good singing from our school choir. But uh, back in the shop today to get started making some new videos and putting some stuff out. Uh, the, the, the first video I'm going to do is uh, a pretty going to be an interesting video. Maybe it'll turn out to a great result. Maybe it won't. I don't know yet. Uh, most loading season is just around the corner. Actually, here in the state of Kentucky, we're uh, three weekends away from the two-day season of muzzle loading, and, and uh, the leaves are going. To, they're starting to come down. Temperatures starting to fall. I think it's supposed to be down in the 40s at night here next weekend. Uh, it's really starting to turn fall, getting that time of year. Every year, I have a couple of these pop up that that someone needs help with. That is a pretty bad problem, and what it is, it's a muzzle loader with a breech plug that somebody cleaned the rifle uh, but they did not clean all of the powder out of the threads on the breech plug then they let the rifle sit in the gun safe for a couple of years and they've not been able to get the breech plug out of it and I'm going to try to get the breech plug out and see if it's salvageable if it's not then we'll have to buy a new breech plug for it but the first thing is I'm going to have to figure out a way to get the breech plug out I have the tool here that's made to remove that breech plug and that's everybody saw these straight metal rods and they get that really really thin little piece of metal that sticks up and it's that it's should have been made a better fit to go down inside of the groove in those the, those breech plugs because the breech plug is the groove for this, this tool is much wider than the tool is itself. But on the other end, what we have is we got a hole drilled through so that I can rig up something and pin it to, to it so that I can use this as like an extension to put in there. And I'm going what my plan is is I'm gonna go with a small impact driver like you would put screws in with just something light duty that's not going to put a terrible amount of strain on this little narrow piece of steel and uh, if it doesn't tear this end of it up and it still doesn't get the breech plug loose then we're going to go with something a little bit more serious and put some more pressure on it uh, with the impact but right now I'm going to rig up a, uh, a socket to go over the end of this with a hole drilled in it so that I can attach the two of them together and uh, that way I don't have to weld anything to this rod because the guy's going to need his, need his rod back after we get everything broke loose and show him how to take care of how to put it together and, and greasing stuff in the proper places so don't have this pop up again. It's not a very expensive little rifle. It's just a little traditions rifle, but still, you know, it's that guy's rifle. Had the rifle for a long time. He wants to hunt with the rifle, and I'm going to do everything I can to get him straightened out. So y'all stay tuned. We'll see if we can't get it get that stuck breech plug out all right y'all what I've done for my first attempt to try to get this out took it just a regular old cheap 5 8 spark plug socket and I cut a hole in it on one side I may have to end up doing it on both sides I kind of want to do it just on one if I can to try to retain as much of the strength of the the socket so it might not split out if I have to put a bigger impact on it all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quarter 20 bolt and I'm going to drop down through it just like that. But the, the bolt will stick in there and it will keep it from spinning when I use the impact. That's what I'm going to try. So I'm going to get it all together and get the camera moved around and uh, get the bolt stuck in there. Open the hole up just a tad more so it'll go all the way through it. And then we're going to put it on there and make our first attempt. Uh, sometimes this works on the first try. Sometimes you have to get creative and build something a little beefier. We're going to see what we have to do. 
but this is going to be our first attempt. I've got other ideas if this don't work, but I'm hoping this one will, this one will so hang around. All right, y'all. I've got the, the barrel action removed from the stock now, so it's just the, the barrel and the scope and the trigger action. There's no stock on it. I'm going to confirm this gun's not loaded. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can take your ramrod and you can drop it down in the barrel and look how far the ramrod goes down in if you got a visual thing that you can reference from or mark it, put a ring on it or something. Then pull it back out and line it up with where the ramrod went into. And if it's less than an inch and a half, then you know that you're not loaded because if you put just the bullet in there on top of the breech plug, it's going to be an inch and a half long. So this gun's completely empty, but I'm going to show you the way that I normally do it instead of the ramrod just to be safe. I take my little light cam here that I've got. Guys, if you do any kind of tinkering on stuff, working on stuff of your own, I bought this off Amazon for less than $9. I, I, there's times I would have paid 100 bucks for it because I can just plug it right into my phone and just download an app and I can look right down the bore of this rifle And if I can get all that stuff out of there, and he doesn't have any spots that's going to be skipped rifling, he should get still decent accuracy out of it, but first we've got to do the hard part, and that's going to be getting that breech plug out. So now, let's go ahead and get set up and see if we can't take this little impact driver that we got sitting right here and make that happen. Okay, now I'm going to have to disassemble the action itself, so I'm going to take... The firing pin spring retaining or plug out of the back of the receiver. Now these are under spring pressure, so you gotta hold them down a little bit as you're taking them out. You know, it's just like a almost like a water pipe plug. And then when you pull that out, then you can take the spring out. If you notice, the spring's got a, a little point right on the end of it there. That actually goes down through the center of the bolt to retain the cocking handle. Now, the, char the, the handle that you pull back to cock the bolt sits in that little groove, that little spring point does, and it keeps it from sliding out. So, it's all kind of held together by the, the plug that goes in the, in the back end of the, of the receiver, and it holds the spring forward so that that little part of that spring that's made like a pin sticks down through the end of the bolt and retains the bolt charging handle from coming out. Now, what we've got to do is we've got to Slide the bolt out. That means we got to take the gun off the safe, pull the trigger. And I'm going to take this Allen wrench, push the bolt back where I can get a hold of it. Kind of hard to do this and keep it everything in front of the camera. There you see the bolt. Yep. And now you look on the end of it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera up in there, but up in there. There is actually a hole for that pin part of the, the spring to go through. All right, so now we've got everything disassembled out of the rifle that we need disassembled. And I'm going to give you a shot of down in there on top of where the, the, the plug goes, the breech plug, and it's nasty all the way out. He, he said it was cleaned. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Well, we're about to find out if we can get it out, and then if we can get it out, then see if we can salvage it. But I, I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. But uh, let's get to it. All right, y'all. Let's see if we can get this breech plug out. Now, here, something I'm going to use. If y'all ain't got a set of these, you need to pick you up a set. It's adapters that'll go in a screw gun or like a quarter-inch impact. Anything that's, that holds a drill bit will hold these. And one of them's quarter inch drive, three eighths drive, and I even got a half inch drive. It's a socket adapter so that you can just pop sockets right onto them and use them on your little impact driver. And they just work just like a, a pop in drill bit or a, a screw bit. Just goes right in there and it's locked in. 
and you're ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this without putting it on a in the vise to see if I can do it that way. May not be able to. We're just going to see. You can see this is just going to be the first attempt. Now I did put a lot of oil on this thing and let it soak for a few days from the inside of the barrel, but all the oil's not in there now, so maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it, maybe it got down in the threads. We're about to find out. That's not good. take the scope off uh, wouldn't worry too much about damaging the scope with that small little impact drill but I'm gonna move up to something a little bit bigger and uh, see if that won't make it move but I'm gonna take the scope off before I do that so I'll take this scope off and we'll be right back well all right y'all as you can see I've moved up a step or three okay I'm gonna put some serious pressure against this thing now uh, now this may I may get to the point now where it has to go in the vise because this thing don't play. Uh, it's it's high torque. I'm gonna I'm gonna set it down on one, but it's still gonna be real high torque. So if I can see that I can't hold it, then I'll have to lock the action in the vise. But I'm gonna try it this way first. Hopefully I won't get hurt. Whew! That's hard to hold. I'm going to have to put it in the vise. All right, we're going to try this again. I've retooled and made it a little bit beefier. Maybe it'll hold up this time. Whew, man, I tell you what. I'm going to turn her up to three. Something's going to give. the tool gave well that's interesting man that thing is stuck in there let me tell you this may be a can't just can't do it situation all right y'all it's time for a public service announcement from the fat man uh, muzzleloading season's coming up it's just around the corner uh, matter of fact here in Kentucky we're on the first weekend of October coming up, and the third weekend of October will be our two-day season. Um, a lot of folks will be out shooting their muzzle loaders, getting everything ready, getting hoping for that big buck of a lifetime. Well, a lot of you may be run into an issue that's going to stop your deer hunting right at the range. That is, if you don't clean your muzzle loader when you use it. Uh, every year get a couple of these to try to deal with and it's it's always a nightmare. It's a headache Myself, I hate doing it. I don't like doing it because it's just aggravating and, and It's just not worth it to me, but I hate to see somebody's hunting season Decimated because now I got to go out and spend four or five hundred dollars on a new muzzleloader Clean your muzzleloaders remove the breech plug from your muzzleloader if you have an inline muzzle loader, if you do not, make sure you put double emphasis on cleaning your bore and your barrel if you have a closed breech muzzle loader, if you can't get the breech plug out. But if you can get that breech plug out, clean that barrel and clean the chamber. And most importantly, clean the threads on the inside of the barrel and on the breech plug. Make sure there's no powder residue whatsoever left on them. Make sure they are not rusting at all. 
make sure you put some sort of grease. Synthetic's best because it won't water away. But if you can't get synthetic, just good old axle grease will work good too. High heat axle grease. You don't have to coat it. You don't have to put a huge amount on there. Just put a few dabs on it, rub it into the threads, and, and don't tighten the breech plug down like you're tightening a head bolt. Okay? That breech plug just needs to bottom out. That's why they make them so long and there's so many threads on them to be like a locking lug. Okay? And you don't want to just crank down on that and then cause yourself a place where it's going to try to seize already. Run it all the way up till it stops. Once it's snug, that's good. If you don't do that, if you don't take care of your muzzle loaders and you don't oil them and you don't clean the threads on the on the breech plug and inside the barrel and grease them, you're going to have a problem just like this fella did. This was a nice little uh, uh, Connecticut Valley Arms muzzle loader. Wasn't a thing in the world wrong with it. His son took it out hunting about three or four years ago, brought it in at the end of the season, shot it empty, put it in the gun cabinet, said, I'll clean it up tomorrow. It was never cleaned, set for about three or four years after it had been fired. It wasn't greased anyway. The guy didn't do that to any of the breech plugs that he had on any muzzleloaders, so he was already probably going to have a problem if they had cleaned it and it set for three or four years. But anyway, it, it, it set for three or four years, and it wasn't cleaned, and it seized so hard. I took a half-inch drive impact and put on this thing and could not move the breech plug. And, and I used a hardened, handmade tool to fit in the groove of this breech plug that, and that half-inch drive impact, that I, that DeWalt impact I've got sitting up there on the bench, broke it before it could move this plug. That was after we heated the barrel nearly to the point that the blue was going to start disappearing. So you got to be careful if you're going to heat barrels on a gun. You can't overheat them. If you overheat them, then you're going to weaken the steel and you're going to make a potential bomb when somebody goes to shoot that thing. So you have to be real careful. You can't afford to make mistakes like that. Maybe you can. Maybe you can buy a muzzleloader every year. I can't. I can't do that. I've got the same Remington uh, 700 muzzleloader I've had for 10 years to make sure that you clean it so it don't end up like this junked it's the fat man I'm gone